Welcome back to Making Records with Eric Valentine. That's me. All right, so here it is. Uh, first sound test in the new control room. And, you know, it's kind of a weird one because there's literally no treatment at all. It's just bare walls of a rectangular room. And so, uh, you know, it's not going to be any revelatory thing, but I just, I wanted to sort of document the whole process of like, what did it start out as? And as I added things and experimented incrementally over, you know, I was, I was guessing it was going to be a long period of time, and it was, man. I, I tinkered with this thing forever. And literally just a couple days ago, I think I, I got to the end of the rainbow, at least for the um, dealing with the, the low frequency part of it. I finally got there. Um, and uh, so... Um, so this is like, you know, the, the, the very beginning of trying to, you know, see what I'm, what I'm up against. Um, so, uh, so here it is. You can, you can see, and I talk a little bit about, um, the plans for how I'm going to, uh, treat things and stuff. Um, as I'm walking around the room, you can hear the space. I mean, there's a long reverb in there. Um, but here you'll, you'll see it all. All right. Okay. So this was the, uh, the first official sound test in what will be the control room. Um, we put up plywood on the ceiling um, with green glue. And, uh, and so it's three quarters plywood. So I'm gonna be able to hang all of these absorptive panels from the ceiling, um, uh, you know, anywhere that I need to. I need a lot of flexibility so I can place them wherever I need to. And uh, so I did, I set up just a basic little thing. There's my little Earthworks mic, you know, an Atom speaker, got my laptop with some fuzz measure going, and, uh, you know, just try and get a sense of how crazy this is. And you can hear how reverberant the room is, um, you know, and all of that stuff usually is easy, easy to deal with. You can put up some basic, you know, foam on the walls, most of that goes away. The issue is the low end, you know, typically doesn't go away. And so... You know, that's where these crazy absorbers come in that have this resonant metal panel in them and will extend the absorption down to 60 hertz. Apparently, it's like open window all the way down to 60 hertz. No reflections all the way down. Or it absorbs all of the energy down to 60 hertz. So, um, so you, uh, let's see. I'll probably find another way to show this. I'm, I'm going to save these graphs because uh, I'm going to graph it. And right now, I'm having an issue because... Uh, fuzz measure <laughs> doesn't go longer than a one second and the decay in this room right now is so long, you know, that I can't actually see the total length of the decay here in the mid range. And even down here, you can see there's some really long decay, uh, you know, down whatever this frequency is down here. I don't have any markers on here. Let's see. I can do that. Um, yeah, there's a, yeah, I don't know that there's a way to put a marker on the waterfall at part of this, but you can see this stuff, you know, where the peaks are. There's a, there's a big peak down at, at, in the 40s. That will probably extend, once there's a speaker in here that actually goes lower than that, um, you know, the, the little atom typically doesn't go much further than, uh, than about 40 hertz. Uh, not bad for a little speaker. Um, and then, you know, there's a big old cancellation right around 60 hertz here. And so, um, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, in, in theory, that's, that's what these, you know, panels will help eliminate is all of that kind of stuff. You know, the room is um, designed to be, it's like a, it's just a rectangular box, but it's all uh, golden ratio stuff. And so um, in, in two relative dimensions. So um, the width to the length to the length is roughly golden ratio and the width to the height is also roughly golden ratio. Um, and just, uh, just turning on some music in the room already, it feels pretty satisfying in here. I, I have to say, you know, like I've, I've had a variety of experiences in control rooms. Um, you know, uh, my original old, play, well, it wasn't the original, but uh, sort of the, the miraculous room, which was called Hunk of Shit Studios, which is where, you know, I recorded um, Third Eye Blind and Smash Mouth and a bunch of crap there. And um, that control room was just, for whatever reason, was just, you know, 
randomly extraordinary. And, and then when I moved to the studio, Barefoot Recording, and inherited somebody else's control room, that control, control room was extremely problematic. And like, you know, I put my monitors up there and listened, and it was instantly very unsatisfying. <laughs> Just like, oh no. <laughs> when I finally got everything plugged in that room, it was a big old oh no. And a long battle you know, to try and get that room to sound good, but eventually, you know, overcame it and learned so much along the way. I'm actually sort of grateful for it. And um, one of the things that was, uh, you know, char characteristic of the Hunky Shape Studios was that it, it was a long throw room like this, you know, so front to back is about 25 feet, a little little over 25 feet, and the width is 16 feet. There, therein you get, you know, roughly golden ratio type stuff. Um, and so... Man, I think there's there's something to it because just putting on a couple reference things just with one speaker in the room, the low end feels good. There's a lot of weight behind it. And just looking at this graph, I don't even know if this is going to be able to show up okay on the camera, but, um, you know, there's clearly some cancellation here, but in the deeper low end, you know, and this stuff I think is easier to address. Um, if you have, a, you know, everything sort of getting killed around here, it can, it can be harder to deal with. And so, you know, this, this cancellation here, it's right at 60. So may, if, if these panels work the way they're supposed to, and it resolves this, then I'm probably good from there down, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. But, um, you know, the ceiling is going to have, uh, the ones that were built by this company Renz in Germany, um, that got shipped here it was an unbelievable drama. Um, and then the, the ones on the wall are the ones that I'm building from scratch per uh, Jurgen Strauss's uh, direction. So, and I'm just I'm just covering everything. There's just any open space. I'm going to try and cover it as much as possible with these uh, you know custom absorptive panels and cover as much of the ceiling. So, I'm really trying to do it. You know, like. Um, this is, <laughs> this is the last time I want to do this, so uh, I want to get it right. And, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my idea is to, like, absorb as much as I possibly can, and then I'll reintroduce, you know, some diffused reflection in the room if it, if it gets a little too um, claustrophobic in here. Uh, but, uh, but here we are. This is the first sound test. There's, there's my golden ratio room there. Um, you know, off, to, off to a good start, I think. All right. Okay, so so there it is. You know, there's def definitely some issues, and um, and it was interesting. You know, as I started working through the the whole thing, you know, these three spots. Now that I'm looking back at this video that you see on the screen, and also sadly, for for some reason, um, those captures that for some reason, like the software crashed or something, and it didn't get saved, and so me showing on the screen what was going on there is the only way that I can show those particular screen captures at this point. Um, they, they got lost along the way. Um, uh, the, yeah, the, the application freaked out and, and lost them. Um, but, uh, but there's like, there's a few spots in there. There's like around 50 hertz, there's a cancellation, around like 150 hertz, and then around 200 hertz. Um, those are the three places that were problematic and it's really interesting uh, those maintain those continue to be the issue throughout the whole process and um, finally at the very end was able to you know get things close enough to be able to finish it off with a tiny little bit of EQ and, and I'm, I think I'm finally there so the low end part of it's done um, I think over time, I'm going to do, I have to, there's going to be a couple real significant things to do. I'm going to have to uh, figure out how to make it look nice. Because <laughs> right now, you'll see, boy, it looks like, you know, a bizarre science experiment in there. So I got to figure out how to make it so it's comfortable to me in the room, just visually. It's just a total disaster. Uh, and then uh, figure out just how much um, diffused reflections I want to have in the listening space. Um, you know, once I have the low end figured out, then figure out just how much air you want in the room. There, there are things about it that can be really nice um, to not have it just be totally dead. It can be a little disorienting to be listening on the speakers. You know, I find that if you're only hearing the sound source 
f directly from the speakers. As you move your head left and right, you'll hear these weird sort of filtering things happen. And then if there's just a little bit of ambience in the mid-range and uh, up, you know, up in the higher frequencies, some of that gets tamed a little bit and the, you know, the listening experience gets a little more uniform or you just have a bigger sweet spot in front of the speakers. So I'll be tinkering with that a little bit more as things progress. And, you know, those are materials that are going to go on the surface of the stuff that I use to ultimately um, d uh, deal with all the bass stuff. And so, um, so that will be part of the aesthetics as well. So, um, so all that will sort of, you know, happen together. So there's that one, you know, um, first, first sound test. So we're, we keep getting, getting closer here. Uh, I'm looking at the next episode and the next one is the moment when the, uh, the sound panels that I, I purchased from the Renz, uh, company, um, uh, that German company that makes these resonant metal panel things, I purchased ones that would go on the ceiling because they're much more difficult to, to build. And so, um, you know, they traveled a long way, <laughs> you know, across oceans and, you know, a long distance and uh, finally arrived. I actually opted to have them travel on a boat because, you know, it was still, I had plenty of time and it was more affordable to do that. So they were, you know, probably in some big cargo container or something on a boat, traveled here and then uh, uh, showed a big crate. It was snowing, at, like it was crazy. Uh, so you'll, you'll see that moment in the next episode. All right. See you then. Bye. <laughs>